Today on Schmindian, we are canceling powdered vegetables and we are making creamy, delicious, fresh vegetables in the form of this delicious sog. Let's make it. Welcome Indian, my name is Paul Singh and this is Indian Food Demystified, aka Indian Food for Schmucks. So right off the bat, I got a beef with Joe Rogan, just like everybody else. Now I've listened to the Joe Rogan podcast for years. I like the guy. One thing I don't like is the way that man disrespects vegetables. This is the guy who won't shut up about eating grass-fed beef or eating elk meat that you killed with a bow and arrow yourself. Always preaching healthy living, always talking about how factory farm meat is terrible. And yet, this same human is selling you greens in the form of powder. This episode is brought to you by Athletic Greens. First, this guy had you jumping into ice baths every day. Now he's trying to get you to eat powdered vegetables. Dumbass. That's disrespectful to vegetables and to the sacred Indian dish of sag. Sog is an absolutely delicious dish, but you wouldn't know it by looking at it or from saying the word sog. The biggest problem sog has is that it's named sog and it looks like this. Honestly, those are two big problems. If any dish looked the same way it sounded, it would be sog. I mean, look at this. This looks like something called sog. But little do you know that this green, mushy, horrific looking substance is actually delicious. It's creamy, it's spicy, but also it has like this kind of robust fattiness to it, which is hard to explain. It's so packed full of umami that it's kind of scary sometimes because it takes you by surprise. You're like, oh, there's some green mush. Oh, I'm like, whoa, give me some more of that. And the reason it tastes so good is because it's made in a two-step process. There's one step where you cook all of the vegetables down and make it into a paste. And the second step is where you make something called a tharka or chunk which is you take some aromatics, fry them in oil, and the oil becomes infused with all of those aromatic flavors, and you dump that into the mush. And something happens when those two things combine, because the texture and the flavor together creates some kind of umami, which is hard to explain, which a lot of Indian food is kind of hard to explain. You just have to taste it. It's incredibly delicious. It's packed with all of these nutrients. Put the powder away and let's make some sog and get on with our lives. And here's our wonderful ingredients. One bushel of rapini, a handful of methi, or as some people like to call it, fenugreek, a small pile of spinach, one head of broccoli, one handsome onion, five magnificent cloves of garlic, a gargoyle's toe of ginger, two long and curvy green chilies, a third of a cup of corn flour, and all these spices. First thing is to make sure you wash all of these, which I've done. So the whole key to the chopping process here is you want to chop it up really fine, as fine as you can do it. That's going to make it real smooth, which is what we're looking for. All right, let's go. I like to take off half the stems and just get in there. And into the pot. Now the fenugreek, AKA the methi. We're gonna take the big stems off and use mostly the leaves. Same deal here, just dice them up real fine. Now the baby spinach. Now for the broccoli, just cut out the florets. Don't think we need the stump. Dice, 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 dice. We should probably dice up our chilies now. Dice them super fine, just like the other stuff. To this green goodness, we're going to add three teaspoons of salt and one teaspoon of red chili flakes, or crushed chilies. We're going to need four cups of water as well. We're going to mix all this together and cook it on medium-high for about 30 minutes. I put the lid on, but leave a little opening on one side. Just enough to let some steam out. Pop in and out, stir it, check on it. So we're gonna start mashing this together. This is where the magic happens. This is where all the ingredients start to come together. So we're gonna go mash, 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 circle, 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 mash, circle, mash, mash, circle. You could use an immersion blender for this part, but you'll be cheating yourself. This is the authentic Indian way to do it. This is the full hipster way to do it. So that's how I'm doing it. At this point, we're gonna add the corn flour as well. This is gonna really add to the creamy texture of it. Very important. I'm gonna put this aside and let it simmer on low-ish heat and then make the tharka. I must admit, chonk does sound better, but I grew up saying tharka, so I'm gonna say tharka. Gonna add some oil. First, we chop the onion. There we go. Now for the ginger, we're gonna remove the skin with a spoon. Cut it this way, cut it this way, and cut it this way. Next, the garlic. And we're just gonna dice these up. 
So the turka is like the miracua of Indian cooking. It's very important. All the flavor is going to be built here. And then we're going to put it here. Almost forgot one dried chili. You're going to want to open a window when you're making this because they're called aromatics for a reason. We're looking for it all to become nice and glassy. It's hard to describe what you're looking for. It basically has to look like this, whatever this is. So now we add the turka to the pot. I almost forgot one cashew for good luck. Now we have all that flavor mixed in with all those greens. And the two of them are getting to know each other and falling in love. All right, let's plate this up. I'm eating this the traditional North Indian Punjabi way with the corn roti and some yogurt on the side. Ideally, I would like a carrot pickle for this, but we don't have any, so I'm using a mango pickle. Not ideal, but still good. Creamy, spicy, delicious, and full of nutrition. But don't just take my word for it. Let's see what my dad thinks. Dad. Yes, Paul. Hi, how you doing? Good, good, good. Good. I like the shirt you're wearing. Oh, your shirt? Yeah, it's summer. You know, summer has started. Yep, yep. In, in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Yes, it has. Yeah. Uh, what are we eating today? Looks like sag. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts about sag? Sag is, takes me back home. Mm. Sag is very popular in Northern India. Punjab state. Mm -hmm. Very nutritious, in, especially in the winter. Mm. The popular saying in Punjab is, it becomes more tastier when you eat second time in the evening or next day. So it's better when you eat it as leftovers? Yeah, but not not too long though, just a day or so. Okay. And if this looks good. You must have cooked for a while. It did, I cooked for a long time. I can see that because it's it's perfect, Paul. Oh. That, that's how it should be. Thanks, Dad. Would you like to try it? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Oh, good. Good. Very good. Yeah. Mm. Good cooked and quite gelled in. So, no, it tastes good, Paul. But okay. Perfect. No, uh, whatever you did, spices are good. Yeah. And I don't think you need. No, it's great. No adjustments, nothing. No, no, no. not today. No. Okay. It's good. Okay. Whatever. Well, it's very, very spicy too, actually. Oh, too spicy? No. No? Good. But it should be because, see, saag generally has sweet taste. So yeah. you have to put spices the right way to make it tastier. Yeah. See, but you did good job. All right. Well, really good job. Thanks, Dad. I appreciate mm. it. Oh, try the, yeah, try the. I could try yogurt or some. Yeah. No, great. Okay. Good job. All right. Thanks, Dad. Appreciate it. Good, good, okay. good. So if you like this video and you'd like to see more, then click over there or over there. Talk to you later.